So if you have this happen, don't throw your whole machine away. You can fix it. If I can fix it, you can fix it. Hi, Shay de Monfort here. About a week ago, I bought a Centro 22 needle knitting machine. I did this because I bought the 42 needle knitting machine, absolutely adored it, but I wanted to do socks. My family does a lot of camping and I wanted to make them woolen socks because as you know, if wool gets wet, it stays warm. All of these super amazing newfangled socks that they have on the market for camping. Uh, one of my sons in particular loves fly fishing, which usually goes up to the Alpine regions to go fishing. And so I really, really wanted to make some socks. Anyway, so I waited and waited and waited until this finally arrived. And when it arrived, it had a broken needle. I was so disappointed. I didn't actually notice until I, until I started my first project and realized that it was dropping stitches in one area all the time as I was going around. So the way it works is it knits in a circle, knits in a tube, each of the little needles come up, pull the yarn through a loop, right, in the old fashioned way, and oops, there's my broken one, so it's not gonna work. So I've looked online to see how to change a needle in the Centro knitting machines. And there's heaps of videos for the larger machines, but none for the little ones. And as I started to pull it apart, I found out why. Because it's not as easy to pull apart and repair as the larger machines are. I think that Centro has really designed this one to be a toy, even though it works very, very well as a professional knitting machine for people that do like to make socks, beanies, scarves, those sorts of things as well. Um, it is lighter weight than the Addy. It is made out of plastic instead of metal, but that also makes it easier to maneuver and it works on exactly the same principle. And as I said, I've been incredibly happy with the 42 needle one. So I thought I'd give this a go and see how we go fixing it. So what I thought I'd make a video, even if just for my own record, just so I can see how to put it back together, just in case it doesn't go well. So I had to go out and get a long, narrow Phillips head screwdriver. So Phillips heads are with the star, all right, um, as opposed to a flat head screwdriver. All right, there were two screws to remove here which I removed and I thought it might just drop this bottom plate off no such luck that didn't come out still doesn't come out so I had a look around and there are four screws to remove and I've I have actually removed those two screws plus the two upper screws and I thought I would just keep my record from here because once I open this I don't know what's going to be inside so this is a journey of discovery for you and for me okay so let's take out these last screws and see what happens here lefty loosey righty tidy so when you're removing screws always turn to the left I have a funny feeling that somebody may have attempted a repair on this before because um, when I told the person that I bought this off on eBay that I had a problem they gave me a refund straight away so this is at this point hasn't cost me anything at all so if I wreck it <laughs> it hasn't cost me a cent at this point in time I haven't lost anything but let's try and repair it and see how we go I have to say no one has sponsored me to do this video this is just my own experimentation so this is a Stanley screwdriver. It's very good quality and I can actually feel, I can push really hard on there with my hand as I'm turning it, which is really allowing me to get some traction in here, which is good. Good on you, Mr. Stanley. Uh, when I grew up, I used to live up the road from Laurie Stanley and the Stanley family. So Laurie, if you're still around, hello. Hope your tortoise is okay. Actually, it's probably many years since you've had a pet tortoise. 
All right, so I think that's done. Ooh. Yep, there's that screw. All right, so this side is free. Let's get the other side. And get that last screw out of there with my lovely Stanley screwdriver, which I can push and turn at the same time. All right, so it's taken a little while, but using a little jam jar technology, um, what we've been able to do is pour some boiling water over it to loosen up this screw. And I had to swap to a flathead screwdriver. And as you can see, that screw is loosening up. Yay, success. Now, let me just have a look at something here. I'll just put the centro to one side. Right, so what we got is two of the same kind of screw, but if you look at the head, you will see that one has been hollowed out more than the other. Let's see. Oh, so there's been a lot of so this has been repaired before and then somebody's tried to show it, sell it as new, but they've burred up that screw. That's why we couldn't get any traction on it. But with a bit of old grandmother's technology by pouring boiling water over it, it actually expanded like the same way that you get a stuck lid off a jam jar. Six screws, do not lose your screws. Put them safely to one side Put your screwdriver safely to one side. And what we're gonna do, <laughs> what we're gonna do now, is we're gonna take this intro slowly apart. So I might do this side first. Now, when I was trying to get it apart, the switch for um, moving it from tube to um, panel it came out. That's all right. It's, believe that that's perfectly okay. Just going to slide this out. Oh my goodness, I can feel pieces wanting to come apart everywhere. So I'm hanging on to it. So there's the outer casing of the centro. So there we go. So there's the outer casing and there's the inner. So we're still trying to get to Even though it's all pulled apart, it still works. That's the beauty of simple technology. If something is good technology, it will work under the most bizarre circumstances. So we are still trying to get to this one. So let's flip it over. So a lot of people have said it's much easier to work on these upside down with the bigger ones. So I can't see, oh, that's a bit of the water. <laughs> I put hot water on can't see how that would be different for this one. So that's that inner circle. Oh, and there we go. That's why the inner circle wouldn't come out. As you can see, the crank is connect connected to the inner circle that was those first two screws. Now, I believe that from here, if I pop that down there, it should be easy to just take out. Now, what I did get from... Um, off of Alibaba, I was able to get some more hooks and I believe these hooks will work for this one and for the larger one as well, but let's see. So I'm just gonna take my beautiful little Stanley screwdriver. Yeah, there we are, there's the broken one. So what we wanna do is put a new hook in. Yeah, so these bag, these hooks of Alibaba were only were very very cheap, right? So, right, so you can see the broken one and the good one, and they are identical. So that should be not hard to repair. So I'll put the broken one to one side, but you can see that hole here. 
So you just have to orient the hook around the same way, which is easy because they've all got this um, white piece sticking out the back. So the hook goes towards the side of the machine and just slips in, bingo! So that's it done, essentially. Because you can actually see when you're looking inside this, there is some wear. So it is not a brand new machine, even though it was sold to me as brand new. So that is a, there's dirt under there. I know a lot of people are using white lubricant on these. I think that might be excessive. I've actually got some silicon lubricant and I'm just going to grab my silicon lubricant and give it a bit of a spray. So I was thinking about using some WD-40, right? but I thought that might be a bit fishy, a bit oily, a bit smelly. So the silicon lubricant spray is the kind of thing that you put on your zipper if it's stuck. You put it on your window runners, you know, if your windows get stuck. So I'm just going to spray some of that in there so that they will slip and put down easy. And I'll put some on the gear wheels. Um, and I want to put some on... Yeah, can you see the dirt in there? See the dirt in this? Yeah, it's definitely not new. They've reconditioned it and sold it as new, which is why I got, see the dirt? So this is why I got given an instant refund on this. So I don't feel bad about repairing this and ending up with a machine. So I'm just gonna spray that little gear wheel, spray all the moving parts so that they run smoothly. Because really, you can see it functions pretty much like a zipper. It is a very simple technology. This gear wheel on the handle here just runs into that gear wheel. And as they go past a certain point, each one of these little hooks just lift up and down, which pulls the, the wool through when it's under tension. Oh, okay, so what, what we have is a pointy bit. Ah, okay, so the needles must lift up as they come around this lump. But if we have a look in here, there is a dip. All right, this is what lifts the needles up in here. Can you see that dip? All right. So that dip corresponds to this plastic peak here. So you've got to put that plastic peak in the dip see and now the needles are starting to line up now the um, screw holes are starting to line up so I'm gonna to have to pick this up a bit so that the needles in that spot can come out oh look and my little handles already moving back into place now you can see that these screw holes have lined up so just flipping that over and what I'm actually going to do now I've got it there put these two screws back in first they probably should have been the last two screws I took out okay now I've got it all to line up what I'm going to do is put these screws back in now what I want you to do and what everybody should always do is have a look at your screws even if you go oh, look they look pretty much the same and you'll quickly see that there are two different kinds of screws there so see, we have two short and four longer. So I'd say the two short are for the inner ring and the four longer are for the casing. So I'll put those aside because there were four in the casing and two on the inner ring. So now we've lined that up. I'm going to put those into the inner ring. This is where a magnetic screwdriver would be good. I'm gonna have to take my bracelet off. Very rarely take this bracelet off because it's hard to put back on. Okay. So. Now the other thing of course you can do if you're feeling a bit gumby and you can't get that screw into the right place is put a little bit of blue tack on the screw and your screwdriver will hold it there until you get it down. So I'm putting that one in there. Oh, that fits like it was made for it. 
turn that around. Do that one there on the other side. So magnetic screwdrivers will help you hold. Oh, I will double check that rings in place before I um, put the casing on. But they slide in really easily. Uh, if you, I would imagine if you put the long screws in here, it, you'll feel awkward. It won't feel right. Okay, so now my needles are not going to fall out the bottom. That's good. Let me just make sure again that this outer ring, which is loose, is on. All right, so I don't know if you can see the numbers there. Let's see if you can see that there's numbers here. See, number 22. So number 22, the last needle is the black needle, right? The first needle is this one beside it that's got number one in the notch. Okay, so now I'm going to pick this up. I'm going to move this outer ring around. I'm turning that and I can actually feel that there is a place for that to sit. So I just turn it around. Did you hear that click? Oh yes, see there is a notch there. See this outer ring here, that one I'm having trouble with, moves, but there is this notch here that it's sitting on. So there is some rough there has been some rough treatment of these notches right so that will be associated with your doing a panel right so this will be associated with you doing a panel so returning it to and from with the panel kind of reassemble it with this is my guide this is the the switch that tells me whether it's um, tube or pattern uh, panel so it was set panel, right, because it's not turning all the way around. So it will be in the up position. Oh, okay, so this is how the switch works. This is where good engineering is brilliant. See? Tube, panel. And what makes it move is that little bit of plastic. Right? That's all it is. So I'm just trying to get the positioning right for when I reassemble it. So I've slipped that back into its little housing. Now I want to make sure that this ring, this outer ring, is in the right position. Okay, perfect. So when you're doing a panel, it should go two needles beyond your starting needle, right, or finish needle, right? So it's your starting needle and one more. So that worked perfectly. So let me just go back the other way. needles beyond fantastic okay so all is lining up well in that world looks like these three dots are to line up with first second and third right so there's your first needle which is one past your black so the black and the next two right which would make these line up with your switches which is just about right which makes these notches here, see these notches, line up with, makes these line up with those there. So that's all you've got to worry about as you put it back together. Let's bring these two halves together. So I believe that the hardest part is going to be getting the panel and the tube switch in the right place. Now at the moment it's set for panel 
So remember it was that, just that little bit of plastic. So I'm going to set it up there for panel. I'm going to slide the crank side in first together, right? which has brought those sides together perfectly with panel. Now it's in there. Before we put any screws in, let's just test. Right. Right, just hold it together with your hands. Right. And let's just give it a little bit of a crank. Oh, that's interesting. The crank wants to pull it apart. So I'm going to have to put my hand across it. All right, so here we go. Two needles past that, and back the other way. Two needles past the black again. So it's doing what it's supposed to do. Yay! All right, except it's pulling apart, which means we need to put the screws back in. So take my trusty little brand new Stanley screwdriver. Stanley with a little rotating head which allows me to hold it while I turn it so I will put the trouble the trouble screw in last and that will be the one with the biggest head so let's do the two top ones and the two bottom ones so as you can see there you need a screwdriver that's very fine with a long shaft so it can reach all the way in those holes without bumping on the side which is why I had to go and get a new screwdriver. So all you should have to do is drop the screw in the correct way. Look at that engineering. Works well. Right. Lefty loosey but righty is tidy. So we're just tightening that up. screw didn't fall out which is a good sign you can always go back and tighten it up a bit more later right so the next one so just drop your screw in here it slide down that long channel and you put your screwdriver in turn it to the right to tighten it up test by rolling over and seeing if it falls out didn't fall out okay that's good so this is the side where I had the problem you can see because it's still got a bit of water on there so I'll go back to the other one so back to the other one drop the screw in tighten it up oh I can feel that one tightening cool done fall out nope oh. okay so the last one the problem one we always have a problem child always do things 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 don't always go the way that we want them to go so right is tight oh, and surprisingly that's gripped quite well all right so then two halves aren't pulling apart anymore I'm just going to turn it around, give it a little tap, see if any of the screws fall out. See if I've done the right thing. Bing, my little tension. You can get replacement tensions, replacement, you can get a lot of replacement parts for the Centro, is what I found out. So if you have this happen, don't throw your whole machine away. You can fix it. If I can fix it, you can fix it. Now, let's have a look. So I'll turn it to tube. Yep. There we go. Running like a little dream again. And all the hooks are good. Yay. So thank you, Centro, for your good engineering. No thank you to the unethical people who repair things and try and sell them as brand new. All my children are going to end up 
with nice warm socks for when they go camping and my granddaughters and maybe even my husband if he's good and if you've had this problem i hope this helps in the comment section i'll put a link i'm not getting anything from this i haven't got a drop shipping store or anything but i'll put a link to where you can get the screwdriver from because that's a bloody brilliant little screwdriver i'll put a link to where you can get the replacement hooks and the replacement um, tensions my first centro i actually had to glue and fix the tension because the tension had broken off here on the end so i glued a bit of balsa wood underneath with um, araldite and then re-drilled the hole out with my dremel anyway even though i'm a busy person this will let me make lovely warm woolen socks for the people that i love if you like this video share 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 if you know somebody else that's having broken needle problems this process works for the the big one as well as the small one except the big one is much easier because with your screws the bottom just comes straight off right you don't have the whole machine in, in parts but as you can see it's beautiful simple engineering so it is easy to repair but the parts are actually quite tough so i wouldn't imagine that i'll have to fix it very often all right give me any like if you've had this problem give me some feedback down below um, and if you've got any tips and tricks for other people who have had this problem sharing is caring and let's create a sock knitting community that everybody can rely on now i'm going to go and knit some socks and i'll throw that in the bin right, bye